Good morning. We are going to be talking a little bit about crow today. We're going to start off on our sides here and this will be a little bit of an interesting start because I want you to come onto your side here and I want you to feel, so I'm going to poke to this part of my outer hip here. I want you to feel this part of your hip on the floor. Now, of course, if being on your side and the outside of your hip is sore, this is not the practice for you, okay? What I really recommend is if you're watching this on Facebook, then um, scroll way back to March or on IG, same thing, or just go straight to my, my, my website. I've got all of the videos that I've filmed since March 15th on a sampler page and start at the beginning of those videos to help you become aware of your body because if you're just joining me for the first time here and you're on your side and you're like oh my god my hip is so sore this is not the place for you to start okay so I would recommend you go there you can watch and you can join along and just kind of enjoy your yourself and your breathing and and noticing but just know that don't go and move through pain okay this is the first video you're watching of me okay so here we are we're on our sides and feeling this greater trochanter here on our hip. And then I'm going to straighten my legs out like so. And I want you just to kind of rock back and forth and get a feel for where that middle point is. So you're not far forward and you're not far back. You're not on, the on your butt cheek. You're right on your side here. Okay. And then what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to think about ro rolling or rotating your leg bone, rotating your leg bone from here and starting to bring your foot up onto your shin like this. Now there might be a little bit of wobbling like you can see with me a bit, right? But you want to be on that middle point of your hip as much as you can, right? So I want you to notice your breathing. Now you know the movement. I want you to notice your breathing and I want you to notice anything that starts to happen up in your jaw area and just bring yourself to here. So the movement, it might think like it's the foot that's doing the thing, but we're actually generating the movement from your hip. And of course the knee's starting to bend and the foot's coming up. So we're watching the foot as being the measure, but here it's through the hip. Yeah. So notice if you start to want to brace up and through this area or in your jaw, and that might be a little too far. So you kind of play. So this is a little bit more challenging to do on your side than we've done with previously with other things. So just kind of play with it. And if you feel like you're, you're able to do it, like I'm not throwing this out like in some regular yoga classes where someone's like, yeah, let's challenge you. This is not, not, that's not why I'm offering this next part. I'm offering this next part because you may actually have the range of motion through your hip and you might have the balance. So just pay attention to this. Don't pay attention to, ooh, I just want to knock this thing out. That's not the point and start to bring the leg up a little higher. Right, and so the idea is that you, you learn how to smooth it out, yeah? So the aim is that your pelvis is staying quiet the entire time. And just watch if there's anything building in your head or in your neck. And so you just play around with the movement that you have, yeah? And the pelvis is staying quiet and you're not rolling back and you're not rolling forward. Okay, so just find the place where you want to be. And just be. And just feel. Easy, 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 easy. Really, 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 really easy. Okay, so it might be here. Okay, good. Okay, let's flip it around. Now I've got like a mic box to lie on here. Let's see how we do. Let me know if things get a little bit goofy. Let me, let me just take this off, hold on. It's the problem with doing yoga. <laughs> and using a mic is you can't necessarily find the place 
that works the best for that. Okay, so here we are. And so you can see I've got my hand out in front. Why, I want you to watch if you're really bracing yourself to fall, from not falling over. So again, this is not about being able to do the movement or not being able to do the movement. Lots of you who follow me, you can do a lot of really awesome things. It all depends on if you can feel what it is you're actually doing because it, that's where we start with in terms of helping you reduce your pain, right? So really pay attention to what your body parts are doing, pelvis and leg bones and torso. And then if you want to take it, you've got the availability. Yep. And being here, you decide where your foot ends up based off of where your hip has ended up. And maybe it's your knee that's telling you how far you're going. But ultimately, your foot is following because of what your hip and your knee are doing. And your pelvis, right? Because we don't want to do this to make this happen. You don't, want to, you don't want to be fiddling around between your pelvis and your torso. Just feel that range of motion that's available in through the hip. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, now let's roll on over. I'm gonna spin around and we're gonna come into a bridge. So from here, let's come into a bridge. The articulating joints are the hips. You're moving around the shoulders as well. Feel the three points of your feet as you lift your hips. All right, lovely. Okay, now let's come on down and roll on over and let's come up into a seated position. And while you get in your block and I get my block, I'm gonna just reconfigure my mic piece here. I want you to just get into a seated position here. And from here, let's take one arm across your body. Good, and start to move your arm into rotation there. Good. All right, and then let's move the arm into rotation, the other arm. So this is the articulating joint. Okay, good. Let's take the arms up like so. Cowboy surrender. Cactus in arms in some places. Good, arms out. Now you might want to drop them lower than your shoulders. So you decide like if that's happening then just bring the arms down to here and bring the arms into extension a little bit and then move the wrists back. So you might feel a little bit of extra nervy type of sensation. So you determine what that feels like for you. I'm a fan of always pulling back You probably are getting to know me as someone who doesn't tend to push through stuff. I find that the turtle typically wins. Actually, I think the turtle always wins. So the slower that you go, so it might be down here, the faster you get better. Okay, let's take a side bend. Now the whole idea about pacing is that you're still doing stuff, right? 
It's not that you're lying on the couch. It's not that you're waiting for the switch to turn. One of the key elements is really being aware of your movement and of your body. And I know we hear that all over the place. I know. I know. So what I want you to be attention to right here is your ribs. And notice if there's breathing and breath into your ribs. Try not to increase the volume of the breath to do that. Just notice if you can move some of the breath from one part into here. Let's go back. Big beach volleyball over there on the side. Nice, and then over we go. Good, all right, now just sit for a moment and breathe and notice what you're feeling today. We're gonna move into plank in just a moment, but I want you just to tune into how you're going so far with this practice, how your day has been, how your sleep was, depending on what time you're watching this. Okay, good, because right now it's just after five here in Canada, where I am. Okay, so from here we're coming into tabletop. I want you to press your heels back. So the toes are under, press the heels back, and just feel those legs, feel your arms, and then we're gonna take one foot back. Yeah, so we've moved from this position and then bringing this leg back. So you'll notice that my upper body and my pelvis hasn't changed at all. All that's moved is my leg. I'm also not bracing anywhere. My toes are back. My legs are active because I'm pressing my heels back, but I'm not anticipating like this. I'm not going into a big bracing motion. Okay, and then from here we're gonna come into plank there, okay? Press those heels back. And then let's come up into dog. Okay, come back into plank. Bring it down. Okay, let's do it again. Toes under, press those heels back. And then one foot comes back. Pressing that heel back, other one comes back. Hips and shoulders, that, that's the motion. Hips and shoulders, this is a nice long dog. Might be longer than you normally practice. Come back to tabletop. All right, let's do one more. Toes under, heels press back. One foot, one foot. Big long dog, big long dog. Good, and then come back to table. Okay, so now we're gonna play with crow. I'm gonna bring myself a bit closer to you. Now with crow today, I'm not gonna actually teach you to lift your feet off because my focus here really is to help you build your strength. And so a lot of the strength comes from not lifting your toes. I think there's a, a funny thing around um, fear, and I mean funny like, um, not funny haha, I mean funny like quizzical. So I don't want you to lift your toes, particularly if there's fear of falling, okay? So I just want you to stay in the point where your toes are still on the ground and see what starts to happen, okay? So we're gonna come a little closer. Now I place my knees right up on the shelf of my tricep. Other people place their knees on the outside of their arms. It's totally up to you what you choose. It has a lot to do with your own anthropometrics and the shapes of your body parts. So you choose what works, okay? So we're gonna come into here, however you set yourself up, and all I want you to do is to find yourself on your hands and just let yourself be here, okay? I'm just gonna move my bracelets here. Okay, so coming on here, bringing your weight over, and just feel the point where your toes are still on the ground. You can feel your hands on the ground, and just be here. 
and you'll probably feel your arms working a little bit. Just be here. Okay, now come off a little bit. Okay, now let's explore the arms a bit more in this position. And we're just going to kind of go in and come out and come in. So even though this is crow, we're just using crow as a movement to help you find and feel your arms in this position. Just remember your hands are now becoming your feet, your arms are becoming your legs, and your shoulder girdle is your pelvic girdle, right? Because that's what's bearing the, more of the load. So that's what you get to play with, okay? So you're here, and now you, just, you find that point. You just find, you kind of play, right? So even though play, whoop, there goes my knee. Even though playgrounds are closed here in my town, we can still find a playground on our mat, right? So my knee fell off because I didn't have a good position of it on my tricep. So you just kind of play here. Find your arms and notice, like notice the perceptible change as you go into it and come out of it. And, and recognize that it's not just about getting your feet up because that's not what today is about. It's about really feeling your arms getting stronger, okay? There we go. So toes are still on the ground and just feel the responsiveness in your arms. So as you're coming from here into, maybe you're in a squat and you're coming forward, notice the change of load through your arms and your hands. Just get a feel of that. Notice it. and easily breathe. Good. Okay, let's do a couple more. You are feeling that in your arms a bit? Good job. Okay, lovely. All right. So now, let's, I'm just going to see what some of the comments here. Good. All right. Okay. So from here, so you guys are doing okay with that. Now I want you to come back on your back and come back into here and just feel yourself on the floor. And feel yourself breathing here. And notice what that feels like. Notice what your arms feel like. And then bring your hands up to the sky and bring your thumb tips together. Raise your arms to the sky and then bring them back. Raise your arms to the sky and bring them back. So elbows are staying straight. And then bring the arms over your head. Now you're only moving in the range where your arms are moving at the same pace and rate. And there's not a twist and your elbows aren't bending and there's no clicking and clunking. Good job. Okay. And then bring your hands back down onto your belly. Easy breathe. Bring one leg to your belly, the other one, hands holding the knees. Start to circle your hips around. Exhale as the legs come in. Inhale as the legs come out and away. And then let's go the other way. So a lot of people have been telling me about how their pain has gone away following these practices, which is great. And so just keep feeling how your body parts are moving in relationship to each other. Keep being aware 
of the whispers to let you know if there's any extraneous strain coming back into your system. And that's what's going to help you consistently progress in terms of your strength, in terms of stamina, and in terms of endurance. Okay, and let those legs come down. Legs straight. And just let the legs fall out. And just notice yourself breathing here. And feel what you feel. If you found that your wrists or your shoulders or your elbows were feeling a little bit sore doing that, then that was probably a little too much for you. And what I recommend is scrolling through the feed here or going straight to my, fa my functionalsynergy.com page and go to Susie's Sampler. It's on the, um, on the homepage. It's on the menu there, right there, the videos. And go through those videos because those earlier videos all help you build up better and better and better mechanics and better awareness of how you're moving. Okay. There's always a way. And when you're ready, bring your hands together. And breathe in with ease and out with gratitude. You have a great rest of your day. All right, we will see you tomorrow.